All right, guys. So here I have a biography. So it is a book about someone else. It is a book about Zaha Hadid. She is a famous artist and architect. So an architect is somebody that designs buildings. So uses their art and creativity to build and construct homes, museums, stadiums, you name it. All right. And actually, Zaha Hadid designed the art museum on Michigan State University's campus. So if you ever go there, check it out. All right. So here's the story of Zaha Hadid. Little Zaha was a Muslim girl who lived with her family in Baghdad, a city where past and present mixed in the most amazing ways. From an early age, Zaha dreamt about the future. So right here, she's your age, thinking about what she might want to do when she grows up. Zaha had her own taste and liked doing things her way. And when she was seven, she started designing clothes, and soon she was working on bedroom furniture. Zaha attended a prestigious Catholic school where children of all religions were welcome. Her favorite classes were math and art. One summer, Zaha and her family traveled to Rome. There she discovered that the walls and ceilings of museums were works of art too, just like the statues and paintings they held. So she went to Italy and realized, man, architects are just as talented of artists as the painters and sculptors. When she was old enough, Zaha went to boarding school in Switzerland, where everyone learned to ski. But she preferred to stay in her room, drawing floating spaces that no one had seen before. In college, she studied math and then moved to London to get a master's in architecture where everyone found her quite unusual. Zaha's ideas were new and she was amazed. Uh, that her teachers with building designs that were not squares or rectangles, but curved shapes. She was doing things a little differently. When she graduated, Zaha remained at the school as a teacher. She challenged her students to be curious about forms and materials, just like the great architect Oscar Niemeyer. So forms are 3D shapes, and that's what buildings are there, 3D. She had to wait 10 long years until the first of her buildings was ever completed. It was a fire station made of heavy concrete that looked as light as a paper bird. So does this look like a fire station you've ever seen? A little different unique sculptural. Zaha experimented with form, designing buildings that looked like giant waves cresting on a shore made of concrete. She convinced the best engineers to challenge machinery and build what was thought to be unbuildable. Trust and believe. From Beirut to Beijing, Zaha's curvy buildings changed the skylines of cities forever, creating her own map of what the future might look like. And she was never afraid of using computer programs or technologies that no one had dared use before. So she has work all over the world. And at first people thought it was impossible. She changed the way people thought about women, especially an Arab woman, in an industry run by men. Zaha brought a sense of femininity to the architecture world. Her colleagues called her the queen of the curve. So she stood out with her interesting and different ideas, but also because she was a Muslim woman. Zaha made it to the cover of magazines as a rock star of architecture. She was the first woman and first Muslim to be awarded the Pritzker Prize, architecture's highest honor. Well done, Zaha. 
And little Zaha, the queen of the curve, became one of the most successful architects of her time, a true pioneer who dreamt of the future and dared to build the impossible. So, the main reason I like Zaha Hadid is because she was a little different. She was considered a little out there, and maybe her designs were just impossible, but she found a way. She never gave up. She followed her dreams. She was passionate about what she believed in and became famous uh, even when people said that she wouldn't. So no matter what, go after what you want to do and you will be successful.